Let's directly jump into it. To create a new profit center, we navigate to transaction code KE51. That's KE51. Just a small remark before we start, so that we are all aligned. Profit centers allow us to divide our company into units, which are responsible for profits and also losses. Examples for profit centers would be divisions or also different product lines. We can create balance sheets as well as profit and loss statements based on the profit centers. Now let's create a profit center. First of all, you can see over here, we need to provide an ID and also a controlling area. The profit center ID can be up to 10 characters and alphanumeric. Let's say product line A in our example. The controlling area is also mandatory. So each and every profit center is assigned to exactly one controlling area. We could also use the copy functionality if we already have profit centers created in our system and we want to reuse some of the values. For now I will hit enter or you can also click on master data. You can see we got some different tabs over here. So first of all we can see basic data. In the basic data the profit center ID was copied from the header data and we can see the status of the profit center is currently inactive because once we created a profit center it still needs to be activated. Then we have an analysis period. So each and every profit center has a certain validity or life cycle, you can also call it. In our case, for this example, you will say that the profit center is valid for, let's say, two years. Then we have a name for the profit center, which can be up to 20 characters. Let's say product line one. And we have a long text where this field over here can store up to 40 characters, but we could also click on this sign over here to include even more long text. Then you can see the basic data. So first of all, we can include here user responsible. This is a system user. However, it is not mandatory. The person responsible row is mandatory, even though it is a free text field. So we need to provide some value here. Let's just say John Doe. Then we could include a department for this profit center, but this is not mandatory. And we have the so-called profit center group. So each and every profit center must be assigned to the profit center standard hierarchy. This is the same also for cost centers or cost elements as you've seen in my other videos. So let's expand the view. We select the standard hierarchy. We could even go one step further down and assign it directly to a group. But in the end, the group is also assigned to the standard hierarchy. So we can also fix this later. Let's select the standard hierarchy. And then you can see here segment. In our case, the segment is not mandatory. However, if the so-called segment reporting is enabled, then we would be forced to provide over here a segment. By the way, the segment is used for the IRFRS accounting standard and is quite similar to a profit center. However, it provides a more sophisticated way to display balance sheets and also profit and loss statements. Just for your reference, the main difference here between a segment and a profit center is that multiple profit centers could be assigned to the same segment. So the segment enables us a kind of balance sheet and profit and loss accounting for a whole group of profit centers. Then we have the tab indicators. Here you can see the indicator called dummy profit center. Right now it is disabled. This is because in my system there's already a dummy profit center existing and we can only have one dummy profit center per controlling area. If this would be a dummy profit center, then all profit related postings in this particular controlling area, which cannot be assigned directly to a profit center, would automatically be posted to this dummy profit center. We also have a lock indicator to lock the profit center for further postings. And over here, a more advanced topic called formula planning, but this we do not need to cover right now. Then we have the company codes. Here we would see all the company codes assigned to our controlling area. In my case, this is only one company code, but in your case, there could be multiple company codes. And then via the assign button, you can decide to which company codes you want this profit center to be assigned to. And then we have the address communication and history tabs, but those are just free text fields, as you can see over here. So they don't have any kind of other function but are just for informational purposes. Now we can save the profit center over here, save as inactive. We will get a message profit center 
product line A saved as inactive. And now we can activate the profit center. Now the profit center can be used for our transactions. We can inspect the profit center via transaction code slash NKE53. That's slash NKE53. And you can see all the data for the profit center. Yeah, and that's basically it. I hope you enjoyed the video. If so, then please subscribe to the channel and activate the bell to not miss any more videos. You would really help me with that and it only takes two seconds. See you next time.